Hi, it's Adam Drummond here from Wagga Wagga.tv, the online television show all about people and places. And today it's all about one bloke. He's a family friend from way back, and he's also a legend here in Wagga, particularly around the cricket nets, where he's coached many a champion from the ground up. Joining me today is none other than Warren Wazza Smith. Thanks for coming on the show, Was. Thank you, Adam. Now, mate, I know you, you well, well, before we go into your career, um, I know you don't like talking about awards and that. You don't even like accepting them because it's not about that. But recently, there is an award that you received that not many people know about because you've kept it to yourself. It's a Cricket New South Wales Lifetime Coaching Award by New South Wales Country Cricket. How does that make you feel, mate, being recognised by such an esteemed body? Well, Adam, it, you know, I'm very privileged because I didn't expect that. And, you know, because I, as I said uh, previously, a lot of things are... I do it for the love of the game and for the people out there, but it's just, a, you know, to be the first one, I didn't know, and I, I just thought that I'm, I'm absolutely thrilled to have something by New, from New South Wales Cricket Country. So, so let me get this straight. You're the first recipient of this Lifetime Achievement Award? Yes. Well done, mate. Thank you very much. And back in 2009, you also uh, were bestowed another honour. You were given an OAM, an Order of an Australian Medal, in 2009, and you were the only person that year to get it for services to cricket. What were some of the highlights from that experience for you? Well, you know, to have an OAM as, you know, cricket is, you know, unbelievable. I just couldn't believe it. I couldn't believe it because I think that, you know, you don't do these things. There's a lot of people out there. But I mainly because of the love of the game and the cricket and to, to go to Parliament House and, and uh, have the governor there, Pache, it was unbelievable. You know, just one of those things. And to have... My wife and my two children there, Adam, you know, who have supported me all my life, you know, so it's been, but it's, uh, you don't take these for things, you know, I, 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 I just enjoy what I'm doing, but if you get those, well, that's it. Now, now be honest with me, you show your medal, does it mean you get uh, get to the buffet first before everyone else? No, you've got to go in line like everyone else, Adam, oh, because that's all part of the deal. <laughs> I thought part of the deal would have been showing the medal, but anyway, you've been coaching for a long time now. When did you start coaching? What year was it? 1969, I started, and then... I progressed, um, you know, from the 72, I got my level one, 70, uh, 75, I got my level three, and I've been doing that, so I've, I'm still doing a several fee, and I think it was one or two of us the only do, active since 75. So it's been a long time. It's been a great ride, but... Well, mate, I can calculate. That's 45 years That's coaching. So you've been... You, how many youngsters do you reckon you've coached? Is it in the hundreds or thousands? Well, it's... Well, you don't like to say it probably is. Because I've been over the world, you know, in India and England, and coached, you know, all over the place. It probably is, probably a thousand or something like that. But it's, you know, it's just something that I enjoy, and I love to see, you know, kids enjoying themselves, have a smile on their face, Adam. Because that's part of the thing. Because what today is, you know, with the world and there's so many things out there, we've got to try and get those kids. And you know, and I, I, what I'm doing with coaching is, it's not only the cricket; it's about people skills and life skills. One of the one of the um, one of the biggest names that you've coached, of course, everyone here in Wagga knows him because he's a Wagga boy. But he had a, a very very successful career as a cricketer, and even today he's got a successful career in the media as a commentator. And it is, of course, Michael Slater. How does it make you feel to think that you had some part in that trajectory of a career? Well, it is. You know, I saw him at Adam at seven year old, and I saw something special because um, I used to run those Monday clinics, and he was up there, and he just then, and we sort of sort of hit it and that was that we became lifetime you know coach and uh, he was the pupil and today we still speak but he's you know I'm very proud of him he's uh, you know he's, he's a great player there's only one one Michael Slater and you know he's had a few ups and downs but he's come out the other thing and the thing about him um, you know we don't see that much but it's always good because he's he's like a second son to me he's just an unbelievable mm. player and he's done as you said very well in the media. So you, you've got it. You've, you know, Slates is one of them, but you've also been uh, linked to people like Andrew McDonald and uh, Sam Robson, who's had a career here in Australia and over in England as well. What's the big difference between, you know, guys like that who go on to successful careers and those who hang up their cricket box too early? They don't give themselves a shot. What's the big difference between those types? Well, I think the thing is it's about dedication. You've got to have a bit of that. You've got to get up and want to do it. We all say that. That's an old saying to throw out line. But the thing is, I see kids, uh, a lot of people that have. Young fellas were better than Slater, and McDonald and Thornley and uh, all these fellas and Sam Robson, but they wanted something to do. And I just happened to, funny Adam, I just happened to be there. They were always going to make it, they sort of, but the one that doesn't want to do it, well, that's good because there's only his chosen to, but that's, they were special players. But I always love to see Adam, the person that comes through the back door, the one that struggled, and then he comes in, I think, yeah. because that teaches him the game and our wonderful game of character, teaching him about people skills and life skills. Yep. yep. 
and made a lot of career highlights uh, teaching these youngsters, travelling all over the world. But one of the career highlights I know for you was to meet uh, the legend himself, Donald Bradman, Sir Donald Bradman. What was it like? You, you became quite friendly with him. What was the Don like? Oh, it's, I coached the Australians in um, 89, the, uh, the Australian under 19s, because Michael was over there and I got a phone call to come over and do some work there and we went to lunch one day and here he was, he was only about that high and he had this squeaky little voice and mate, he was, a, and I, believe it or not Adam, I honestly, I sat down and he sat down next to me and I absolutely didn't know what to do. I didn't know how to call him <laughs> sir or what's his name, but he was a lovely, lovely man. But I remember him walking around and he said, oh, you're a cricket coach, are you, son? And I said, yes, sir. And he said, well, you know what you should do with all your, all your uh, cricket material? And I said, no, that, throw it in the Sydney Harbour. And I said, yes, Sir Donald. But he, he was a lovely man. And to meet Sir Donald Bradman was probably, you know, one of the greatest highlights I've ever had. And the thing about him, he never bagged anyone. And, you know, today he's the greatest sportsman probably what Australia's ever ever had. Oh, of course. Yeah. And I can't imagine Wazza Smith being starstruck. That surprises me. Mm -hmm. Now, mate, you're also a lot of, I don't know if everyone knows this, but you're also an author. I'm going to give it a bit of a, a plug here, mate. You wrote a book, quite a cryptic title, How I Taught Michael Slater to Play Cricket. Were you worried people wouldn't know what it's about? Oh, not really, <laughs> you know. <laughs> no, not really. It was, it was uh, you know, it was a, you know, Terry Smith, who, was, who did the main thing, and I spoke to him, he was a, a lovely man, you know, and he just wanted to do it. And I didn't want to do it at first. And then Michael said, yeah, right, I will do it. But it's good. You know, it's just on, on coaching and on my life and Michael's life, how he had a bit of a struggle and things like that. And, you know, and it's, you know, I, I'm pleased I've done it now yeah. because of, uh, you know, things of cricket, because I have, you know, I've traveled a, a, around the world and different things, but it's nothing, you know, it's a bit just one of those books for you for coaching. It's a great uh, book for youngsters who are wanting to play cricket because you've got a lot of tips in there on technique and, mm. and some of the life experience stories that you've gone through and Michael as well. So so make sure if you are a young cricketer, you can still get this book online or go into one of the bookstores and tell them to order it for you because it's a, it's a great read. And finally, mate, I know uh, last time our old mate Max Walker was in town, and we, we got him to go out and have a look at your memorabilia collection, which he absolutely loved, and he signed a few things out there for you as well. But people would want to know, I, I know for a fact you're giving it away, uh, bar a couple of items you give into the kids, you've promised them, but where do you want this collection to end up, and where's the whole process at the moment? Well, thank you, Adam, for that, because Max, was you, you brought him out that morning for morning tea, and he sat there and was made a tremendous man, and the things he just couldn't believe and there was a couple of other people who have been out for council. I want to give it to Wagga, Adam. I don't want anything. All I'd love to do is give all this memorabilia because I've got a lot on Slater, Thornley and a lot of the test players, you know, and Philip. I've got gear on all these players and I want to leave it here in Wagga. I don't want to give it to any other city because I love this city and I just need, well, I'm trying to do something with the council at the moment, but I'm, I'm still trying to get something because what I'd love my idea is to there and they can come in and pay a dollar or two dollars, but it's got to be somewhere, not where it's not in a club or anything like that. So the kids can come in, and because it's, as you know, Adam, it's the city of good sports, mm. and mate, we we've just got to because we've produced some three test players in this in this wonderful city and four shield players, other than the other sportsmen. And it's not only cricket, but there's a lot of stuff that I've got there, and I'm I mean it. There's a lot of people, when I've been around, would say to you, well, they get that because I leave, and they've present it and leave it there because we need that because we've got a wonderful city and we're not doing it. Yeah. No, I, I can't wait until it is out there and, um, and mate, it, it's very generous of you to, to give it to the city like that without asking for a dollar at all yourself. Mate, it's been a pleasure to have you on the show. Was a Smith cricket legend. Thanks, mate. Thanks, Adam. He's, a, he's an old mate. I'm proud to call him a mate and he's done so much for this city and for Australia as well. This is Was a Smith on Wagga Wagga TV, the online TV show about people, places and we'll see you next time.